All right, welcome to OUAB in the kitchen. It is market basket night. And I did send you a list of all the ingredients that you could possibly consider making something imaginative. And I also sent another list uh, through Dustin on items that I came up with as I broke down all those ingredients and decided to do certain things. So what I did is set up a whipping cream, which we'll come back to a little bit later, which just consists of whipped cream, powdered sugar, vanilla, and the raspberries. We're gonna take a look at that a little bit later. And then I have ingredients for the ganache, ingredients for crepes, a seafood and marinara and sausage stew. And then I have I'm making a quesadilla, um, filling that in a, with some succotash. So that's what I came up with using all the ingredients and I thought that was probably the best thing I could do with that. Let's start tonight with the ganache. And for that, you're gonna need a double boiler, very much like I have here, which is a small, shallow level of water in a saucepan with a, with a bowl on top of it. And that's just there to be able to keep the water very super slow as we add the chocolate chips and the heavy cream. And together, those two are what we need to be able to make a ganache. Ganache can be used for a ton of various applications. It can be used for frosting cakes. It can be used for dipping buckeyes or dipping strawberries. Just a number of various applications. Tonight, we're going to use that as a fold into Chantilly cream or whipped cream flavored with vanilla and sugar as a filler for the crepes that we're going to make. As that milk or the heavy cream and the chocolate chips start to dissolve, I'm going to add in the coffee extract. You could use powdered coffee if you wanted to do that again. However, there's plenty of coffee extracts out there in the marketplace that are available for us to work with. Next, I want to work on the crepes because those need to rest for just a moment. So for that, I'm going to use a stainless steel bowl or any bowl that you may have at the house. And with that, I'm going to put in one shell egg. Cracked it in advance for you. And with that being said, I'm going to start to whisk that egg so that it's nice and homogenized, nice and smooth. I'll put this over here where we can see it and get that whisked up nicely behind that I'm going to put in the milk and let that milk work in with the egg so I'm going to put in the dry ingredients which consists of a little bit of sugar a little bit of baking soda and a tablespoon of tap water and I'm going to put in about three quarters of the oil that you have in this particular recipe a measure of that oil we're going to keep off to the side and we're going to use it to coat the skillet that we're going to make the crepes. Now that that's put together, we're going to add the flour and allow that flour just to dissolve and to incorporate into that liquid matter. And it's just a simple batter, very much like a pancake batter would be. No changes to that. Pancake batter probably has a lot more flour, a couple more eggs, and a leavening agent typically is going to be a baking powder to give it a lift. So this is now a sweet crepe. You could very easily make a savory crepe by omitting the sugar and adding in some other ingredients something maybe like a mushroom powder or mushroom powder and chives or simply just some chopped herbs whatever you choose could certainly be uh, permissible when it comes to making a different type of, of crepe batter so i'm going to let this rest off to the side and we'll come back to that in a moment meanwhile we're going to preheat a skillet and let that warm up for our seafood stew. It doesn't take too long to cook, but I want to get it, I want to get it rolling. The ingredients for the seafood stew I have here. While that's heating up, I'm going to take a look at the ganache. All I really want to do is melt that chocolate so that I have a nice smooth, creamy mixture with the melted chocolate and the heavy cream. It looks like it's there, and I think that's pretty much what we're looking for. So let me pull that off the fire. I'll bring back this bowl so we can take a good look inside. And we want to be able to cool down this ganache. It's a nice, creamy, homogenized combination of the chocolate chips and the heavy cream flavored with coffee. You could use Grand Marnier. You could use brandy, a cognac, 
about anything you'd want to use. We want to allow this to cool down to touch before we do our Chantilly cream to add it into it. If we add it to the Chantilly cream too hot, we're going to have a problem with the cream breaking and becoming very liquid-like. So we don't want that to happen. This is going to have more than you need here. But you can take a look at this nice creamy mixture of chocolate ganache and see how that could work out nicely for a lot of other applications that you may have. It's uh, very flavorful. Has a lot of various uses. So I'm going to let that cool down, get it out of the way over here off to the side. So now I have a skillet heating up for the seafood stew. I'll put another skillet on the fire just to be able to get the succotash started and allowing uh, both of those to heat up. So a little, little bit of oil that you have on your tray, you don't need much, maybe about a teaspoon of oil to coat that skillet and to start the sausage, which is a pre-cooked sausage. I just wanted to give it a, give it a little heads up, a little oil and cook it just to get a little color on it and that's our objective with that. So save whatever oil you want for any other applications you may need this evening. Once that sausage gets a little color we're going to move right into it with the shrimp. I leave the shrimp whole. You can certainly feel free to take those and cut them into small pieces so you have more distribution of those shrimps if you wanted to. Skillet on my left on the video is has heated up. I'm going to add in a small measure of oil. Again, about another teaspoon of oil. I'm going to start to saute the red and the green bell peppers. And those are the base foundations for this succotash we're using this evening. It's pretty popular vegetable that's used common in the industry. Uh, on not really upscale places, but some restaurants will have succotash on the menu. Usually in the south, you'll see a lot of it down in the south. It's indigenous to where the corn's growing out in Iowa. It's named after uh, a Native American tribe. They had that, or a vegetable that they called that succotash. I think it was the name of a Native American is how that came about. So it's been widely used mostly in the previous decade. I saw a lot of it in the 80s and 90s when I was growing up. My aunt used to buy succotash. Bird's eye actually makes a succotash, which is basically just corn, lima beans, sometimes a mixture of bell peppers, etc. This evening we decided to use edamame because I think it's a better wholesome and more nutritious item than the lima bean. And I'm going to go in right behind it with the shrimp and let those shrimps start to get so a little bit of color on them with the sausage as our peppers are cooking. We're going to add in the little diced red bell, red onion, and let those onions cook down. We don't want any color on these succotash. We just want to allow them to get nice and tender, good and soft in that process. So we're going to bounce back and forth between these two skillets for the seafood stew and the succotash. While that's working, I'm going to take a moment to use some of the oil that I have to brush on the tortillas that I have so that they can go into a skillet when we're ready. I usually brush one side and stack them up with the oil sides down in advance. You could certainly place oil into a skillet or onto an electric griddle or the little center plate you may have on your range to be able to do quesadillas. Tonight I'm using a skillet because I think that's pretty safe that most of us at home likely have skillets that we can use to be able to make these quesadillas work out well. I know it's not a very fancy dish. It really doesn't have a lot of, a lot of character to it, but it is uh, something I, could, I came up with that would utilize all of our vegetables that we had. I'm going to put in the chopped garlic. I'll let those red onion and peppers have started to become a little bit softer. And allow that garlic just to sweat briefly, pretty much like we do all applications of garlic and all of the recipes that we do here in the IK for OUAB in the kitchen at home. So once that garlic has a really nice aromatic to it, I'm going to put in a squeeze of lemon. I got two halves. You can use both of them if you like. You can certainly use the zest. I thought it might be a good idea to put the zest in the uh, in the crepes just because 
we could utilize it and not have to throw away that wonderful zest that I always talk about as a wonderful addition to any use that you may have. So I'll allow that lemon juice to reduce down a bit. I'm going to start back to the sausage and add the white wine and allow that white wine to reduce with those sausage and the shrimp, putting all that product together. After that wine reduces down, it's a slow simmer and that's okay. Let's, let's flip those shrimp, they're going to have a nice pink color to them. These are golf shrimp, wild caught from a very good sustainable source here in the Gulf of Mexico, not imported from any other area of the nation, of the planet. So this garlic looking good. I'm gonna go in with the edamame, followed by the sweet corn. We'll let those two heat up. And then I'm likely to go in right behind it with the Southwest spice, which have a lot of very nice spices to that. A little chipotle powder. It has some cumin and coriander, chili powder, the chipotle pepper powder, and a little bit of smoked paprika, main compositions of that. Let those kind of sweat. Everything's pretty much cooked. We just want to heat everything up. You got a nice side dish here. It could be used for other applications, other meals, etc. Okay, so that leaves us with our little bit of parsley, our quesadillas, and our cheese. So as that wine reduces down, I'm going to go in with the marinara sauce. Let the marinara sauce go in and work with that wine. And with that, I'm going to put in the, the little pureed roasted garlic. Allow that to incorporate into the marinara so that all those flavors work well together. Let that come to a simmer, and as soon as it does, I'm going to put in the mahi mahi. The mahi mahi I took out of the cryovac package, and I just simply cut it into four bars. Those four bars I cut into six. Each bar I cut into six pieces. So I have 24 little cubes of mahi mahi. Leaves me with parsley. Uh, mixed Italian herbs and some sliced olives from the Mediterranean region. All good flavor enhancements for this dish. Well, uh, this beautiful succotash looks good. We'll season that a little bit of salt and pepper. A little bit, we're going to share a little bit with the seafood stew. A little salt, a little pepper. Just to lift the flavors of that a little bit. We won't regret it, I'm sure, a little bit later on when we do the tasting. But now that that is seasoned, it's all, it's all reheated. Peppers are tender. Garlic is aromatic. We're going to pull that off to the side and allow it to rest. We're going to put on a skillet to cook, prepare the quesadillas. About the same temperature. That's all we need for that. We'll let that preheat. Now I've got a nice simmer, especially around the edges of the seafood stew. I'm going to work in the, the mahi mahi. Nice big chunks. I think you've got to be able to have something to put on your spoon to enjoy this. Now at this point, if you decide amongst yourselves how you want to eat this, it's wonderful just by itself like you would eat normal stew. Or you could have like a nice little grain to serve with that. It could be a rice, it could be a, a pasta of some sort. It could be a strand pasta or an extruded pasta like a little penne pasta or something small that would have those ridges to absorb some of those wonderful nuances from the sauce. Now that the mahi's in there, we're gonna put in the chopped olives. And then we're gonna put in just about a third of those Italian herbs. I'd like you to save the rest of those or something else later on this some so later on this summer that you might want to make. So I'm going to leave that chopped parsley off to the side. We're going to use that at the end, maybe as a garnish, somewhere along the line. Now I want to take a look at the skillet. I don't want to get too hot because we want to be able to put a little bit of color on our quesadillas without going too crazy. Let that seafood stew simmer, allowing that mahi mahi to cook all the way through. 
I'm going to take a moment to be able to whip the cream, heavy cream that we have. It's going to be our Chantilly cream. So I'm going to take a bowl. Simply take a bowl and I'm going to put that bowl over a little bit of ice just to be able to get it cold. You don't have to do that. If you're going to put the bowl in the cooler for a minute, that always helps. So just the bowl, cold bowl in advance for sure, cold cream. I'm going to put that, the confectioner sugar, and the vanilla extract are all relative to preparation of this dish. And we're just simply going to whisk that till it has nice semi-firm peaks. We're just going to work it so that those sugars dissolve, the vanilla incorporates, and we're working air into the cream, kind of aerating it as we move along. Mahi's cooking a very nice slow simmer on the stove top. Succotayash is a warm and ready to go. Crepe batters standing by waiting for us to start making some crepes. I'll allow it to rest a little bit so that the flour strands relax just like a pancake batter. Allow it to rest just a little bit. Ideally at room temperature and not super cold. I think that makes a difference on how those crepes are going to work out. This is a little bit of an exercise. You're gonna have more Chantilly cream than you need for those four crepes that were, you could probably make eight crepes based on how big of the skill it is you have that you're gonna work with. It's really up to you. I'm gonna pick up the speed on this a little bit. I hope everybody has a good summer and that they've been able to get through finals week. And if you aren't already done, you probably will be by the end of the day tomorrow. A little bit of time before you take summer classes if you're on one of those accelerated career paths to be able to get college behind you and start a lustrous career. But nonetheless, take time for yourself. It's been a crazy year. And I think... Uh, a little bit of R&R &R is certainly going to help everybody along the way. So the cream is starting to incorporate, starting to see lines come through the cream as I whisk it. Now note that I just elected to do the cream by hand, largely due to the fact that not everybody has a mixer or a handheld beaters, that kind of thing, and everybody has an arm, and we should have a whisk to be able to have whipped cream come together that way. So that was why I did that don't have to it's an option soft peaks not terribly tight but nice soft peaks I'm going to keep that on the ice for a minute come back take a look at my ganache ganache has cooled down pretty well got a nice still has a little bit of temperature underneath it I want to keep stirring it and we'll come back to that in a moment seafood stew I'm going to turn these mahis around a little bit, make sure they're getting cooked on all sides. Fish we usually cook to 145 degrees, simmering in this delicious sauce, fortified with white wine, herbs and garlic, and olives, I think, is going to make this a very delightful dish. I'm going to put that in a warm spot, and I'm going to get my my pan, same, same size pan that I used previously for this seafood stew. And I'm going to use my pastry brush again to line the base and the sides of that skillet with a little bit of oil for my crepes. And I want it to get hot enough so that I can let that work. So while that's getting hot, I'm going to put in a quesadilla, one on each side of my skillet. It's been preheated. Manage that heat. And I'm going to put in some cheddar. It's supposed to have been Cheddar Jack, but they sent me cheddar cheese, and I didn't want to send it back. So I just opted out to keep it. Some of you may have Cheddar Jack. Some of you may have just cheddar cheese only. Either way, I think it's going to be... Pretty darn good. Won't go wrong. 
That cheese is going to melt pretty much on its own just from the transfer of heat from the skillet to the tortilla. I'll put in some of that succotash. It's really up to you on how much you want to put in there. I like to have a nice bite of it so I can enjoy those quesadillas. Leave that off to the side. Maybe we'll serve some of that on the side. I'm going to make sure my skillet's nice and hot so that when I put my so that when I put my uh, crepe batter in there, it seizes up just like a pancake. A little cilantro left off to the side. Let's sprinkle that on there. I'm only going to make two quesadillas rather than to be too redundant. I'm going to grab my crepe batter. And put it in that hot skillet, lightly oiled. And allow, when you put that, I'll make a few of them. When you put that crepe batter in the skillet, kind of roll it around so you have a nice flat surface and our goal is to be able to just like a pancake allow that batter to cook so it's kind of brown around the edges and the little bubbles that may appear start to collapse and then it's time to be able to flip over so that's the step process for that I'm going to put half almost all of the chopped parsley I'm going to save a little bit back for garnish which I'll put on there a little bit later just because I like those little accent garnishes on things I think that matters a lot. We'll take a look at the quesadillas, see if they're browning up nicely on this side. Yes, they are. It looks beautiful. Just give them a quick flip over. I take it from the middle right over so you have these two sides. Once they've achieved that, give them a little press down to make sure cheese melts on both sides. That's a pretty elementary dish. I don't think there's too much complication to that at all. Now that I've got those brown edges, I'm just running my spatula around the sides. I'm going to just flip that crepe over. I like to use my hands on this so I have a little bit more control. Nice little color on the crepes, all we need. Once you flip it over, it's only a few seconds on that one side to be able to get that crepe to cook on the opposite side. Because we put the oil in the bladder, we don't really need to have oil on the skillet each time. That's up to you if you want to. But the key there is to be able to use your wrist to turn the skillet to be able to have that batter distribute evenly around the edge of the dish. Seafood stew's done. I made some rice ahead of time this afternoon because that's what I wanted to serve it with. And so I just used a, a plain white rice and put in some olives that I had, a little bit of diced bell pepper. And I'm going to put that in kind of a ring around the middle of the dish. And I'm put my seafood stew right in the middle of that. My crepe is ready to turn. I want to stay with those. You see the little tiny holes that develop. I still have a little bit of a wet spot there. I'm going to just kind of work my spatula around the edge to make sure I don't stick. If you have a crepe pan at home, which I would be delighted if somebody did, please let me know. Because I think that's pretty special if you have a crepe pan. It depends upon your nationality. Some folks have crepes for breakfast, for an afternoon tea, or for a little dinner. Again, these are... These are safe, sweet crepes. You can certainly make savory crepes as well. So again, the batter goes into one side. You just simply tilt the skillet until the batter goes all the way around and allows that batter to spread out. I'm going to come back to the seafood stew, finish off that plating. I'm going to make sure that this portion has at least two or three pieces of sausage, at least two or three pieces of shrimp and at least two or three pieces of that delicious mahi-mahi, which is also a wild-caught fish that came out of Ecuador. It was a frozen piece that you've got in your kit. Maybe you recognize that based on when you picked it up, what temperature it was when you got it. But that's one serving of that delicious seafood stew. Hopefully you're going to like that. We'll come back and look at that here in a moment. We're going to garnish that up a little bit with a little bit of reserved chopped parsley right there in the center. A little sprig of parsley would be great too. But that's uh, what we're doing for that tonight. Quesadilla looks pretty good. This crepe's ready to go. A little tiny bubbles all disappeared. Got that beautiful, nice golden color of that crepe. Again, only a second or so on the opposite side. For that to work out and then those crepes are ready all right so that's pretty simple for crepes to be able to 
make those make those happen. Quesadilla, I'm going to go ahead and plate those up. For on the quesadilla, I'm going to have a little bit of the succotash that we had off to the side is to represent kind of a side dish because we've got more there than we need to be able to fill two quesadillas and heck, this is where our vegetables are coming from tonight and in a sense and leaving those behind and then I'm just simply going to present those on the plate side by side and that's kind of a handheld it could be fun to eat on your own whenever you're ready this could certainly be a lunch for tomorrow it could be dinner tonight seafood stew could be represented either tonight or tomorrow however you wanted to prepare that the world is yours now I have my crepes and my ganache I'll take a look at the ganache and it's kind of smooth and silky I'm gonna cool down just a hint more putting it in that ice bath that I had for the whipping cream I don't want to have it too cold because if I get it too cold it's going to thicken up and then I have to melt it down and soften it up again so just a few seconds on that ice and my next step is going to be simply folding it into the into the whipping cream a little spatula would be my friend for this again I'm going to reserve some of that ganache for garnish this evening so I'm going to pour in about a third of it and I'm just simply going to fold it into the whipped cream which we know has already been seasoned with some sugar and the flavor of vanilla extract we have a beautiful coffee extract in the composition of the ganache so we've got a really dynamic flavor going on here and hopefully you'll like you could have used an orange extract or any other type of flavor it's really it was up to you but that's what I had here and I thought that would be delightful so I'm going to put in all but maybe about a quarter cup of the ganache I'm going to use that for a little garnish as we finish the plate just folding in that Chantilly cream with the ganache and making this nice mixture and you can opt to put all the berries in there in the Chantilly cream or you could put them in the crepes so you have an even distribution so nobody's jealous at the house that somebody else got more raspberries than someone else. So try to keep peace in the family. Decide how you want to do that. But that's your Chantilly cream pretty much there. We'll plate these up. Simply a dessert plate. So what we're going to use this evening, lay out the crepe with the brown side down. Put in some of the Chantilly cream in the center, maybe offset center. Put in a few raspberries so you have that nice distribution. So everybody has one. And then we're just going to kind of roll fold that crepe. I'm going to put three on this plate just because we made three, you may as well use three. Again, repeat, same process. Chantilly, mocha chantilly cream, a few raspberries. And then a fold in nice and gentle leaving the ends open I think makes for a nice presentation and last but not least crepe number three now this is definitely not a portion set suitable for a, uh, a wholesome lifestyle certain something you could share a couple of people but it's light if that's a good excuse it's a nice very light dessert so there I have my delicious looking crepes filled with the uh, mocha chantilly cream I'm going to use a little bit of that ganache that I had left behind I'm going to just put some on a spoon and just going to drizzle that over the top of those crepes not that they weren't already decadent enough as they were I've got the ganache why not use it no sense to me leaving that for somebody else I did take the liberty to whip a little bit of cream before the video this evening just because I wanted to have a nice little presentation for us tonight and I put that cream in a pastry bag and line up that line up a little bit of that cream on there a few raspberries to give it a nice attractive look if you wanted to really hit it one more time with some confectioner sugar 
and make for a nice dish party of two. All right, so that's basically it for that. I have a little bit of cilantro left for my quesadillas. I'm gonna accent garnish those. And that is our market basket. What I came up with with that big list of ingredients, the nice quesadillas with succotash, seafood stew featuring mahi, shrimp, and Italian sausage. Zesty marinara sauce, I just opted in on that Mediterranean rice. And then we have kind of a classic French preparation of mocha chantilly crepes for our finish. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, this spring semester with OUAB in the kitchen. We'll be back uh, with more sessions in autumn of 21. So look, looking forward to seeing you again at that time. So have a great summer. Enjoy the break. See you then. Have a good night.